Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a fabulous day today. I know it's early, but you know. All right. So here's what I'm gonna do for today. It's gonna to be a little different because what we're gonna do is start off with some upbeat news about the royal family. Then we're gonna slide down the hill into the Harry and Meghan land. And then we're gonna climb back up out of the hill for some more really good news about the royal family. So it's up, down, up, okay? But that's where we are, that's what we're gonna do. So buckle up and let's get busy, shall we? Let's go. FYI, that picture from above came from Twitter from Visit Scotland. I would love to jump right into that photo, wouldn't you guys? Okay, okay, let's go. Well, to start off with, it's been reported that William and Catherine will be going to the UK premiere of Top Gun. I love it. Oh, you remember last time there was a movie premiere, she wore that absolutely gorgeous gold dress. I can't wait to see what she's wearing at this one. Okay, moving on. We have fabulous news. The Queen went to the Royal Windsor Horse Show three days after she pulled out of the state opening of Parliament. Now, remember, her issues are mobility. So what I noticed is when she got there in the car and they parked the car so that she could see from the car, that shouldn't stop her from doing the things that she loves. And we do know that she went to see her horses privately three days before that. Um, but here's a little video to show you what went on when she arrived. Watch this. FYI, I had to make it silent so I wouldn't have a copyright infringement on the music that was playing. So, okay, now watch this. I'm so happy to see her. She looks happy. She looks healthy. Yes, there are mobility problems, but that seems to be, you know, all there is is just mobility problems. Now, she did eventually get out of the car. She had a walking stick. She was with her son and daughter-in-law, and look how happy she looks just to be there with the horses. And, of course, the crowds let out a cheer when they saw her. Yes, fabulous. Now, while this was going on, Edward and Sophie were taking lots of pictures and looking very proud, and we were like, what's happening? Well, that would be because Lady Louise was there that day driving the carriage that she inherited from her grandfather. Watch this. Kept this aside and sold it for You also began to buy gold ponies for his own use. The mayors, the people, for the nucleus, the Windsor and the moral studs, and sparked the interest of the other members of the family. Now, speaking about Lady Louise, she also rode the carriage at a gallop through history, which is a different event, which we're going to touch on a little later with a different royal. So here's some pictures for you. And doesn't she just look phenomenal? Now, this is the carriage that she'll be driving with all the, well, almost all the great grandchildren in the back. I think that's absolutely fabulous. I love the way she looks. Very good looking woman. Yes. And I love the fact that that was something her grandfather did with her and she's carrying on the tradition. You know what I mean? All right, moving on. Well, we've all heard the news that Harry and Meghan are going to go, so they claim now, to the celebrations, even though they can't be on the balcony. And this has made the palace and the royals very nervous because... They don't want to be part of the Netflix special, and Harry and Meghan need that footage. Now, according to this article, the Queen asked them to stop on their way to the Invictus Games, that she acquiesced to their demands and allowed them to bring the Netflix camera. And the source also said that Harry failed to deliver on his promise to bring the kids. So they basically tricked her into the meeting. I guess we'll find out when Netflix posts the stuff, if that's true or not. But somebody else will have to tell me because I won't give one click to Netflix. So the question is, would they really sell out the family to Netflix for money? Um, yeah. 
They left to have financial freedom. Their motives have been very clear for a while now. It's all about the money. But Netflix was a day late and a dollar short to the party. Yep. All right, a royal expert has said that there really isn't any plans from Harry to use the Jubilee to heal the rift with his brother. Yeah, I, I get that. Because supposedly Meghan and Harry were plotting to use it to figure something out. But it's just, it's, gonna, it's doomed to fail. And let me tell you why it's doomed to fail. It's doomed to fail because Harry is the one who attacked the family. Harry is the one that said William was trapped. Harry is the one who lied about Catherine and said she made Meghan cry. Harry is the one who said that Charles was trapped. Harry is the one who lied and said that the royal family turned a blind eye to Meghan's suffering, even though Meghan told him supposedly that she was suicidal and he did nothing for his wife. Until Harry apologizes for everything that he's done, Nothing will be resolved. It, it's, you, no, he's going to have to apologize. And that's something he'll never do because he'd have to admit that he lied. Mm. All right, moving on. Well, this article certainly caught my attention because apparently Netflix insiders are leaking information that Megan has a total out of touch entitlement. She thought that her kids show was automatically greenlit and was going to be out there. And yeah, she just thought she would present it and it would be released. And the word was she was very upset the show wasn't picked up. But we, we already know why. Because she was going to merch the hell out of it. And it's being reported in this article that there is a stipulation in their Netflix contract that they're allowed to shop rejected projects around to other streamers. I, I would think that other streamers would take a look at what they haven't done and go, you know what? We can't afford you. Let's see. Let's see what happens because, you know, I, I, yeah. All right. All right. Commenting on Netflix decision to drop Megan's animated series, Andrew Pierce, who is the consulting director of the Daily Mail, said that Netflix maybe had come to the conclusion that Harry and Megan are not the investment that they thought they were. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think once the Heart of Invictus and this Fly on the Wall documentary comes out, I think once all that comes out, um, if it doesn't do well, I think that's the end of Netflix. All right, moving on. My goodness, Sex Pistols star Johnny Rotten joined Piers Morgan on TV to discuss the future of the monarchy. And he slammed Harry and Meghan as he questioned their decision to step back from the royal family. He says, I'm sorry, I think they've shown themselves to be parasites. And I completely agree with that. He said, if you want to opt out of the family situation, then do that. Go and work for McDonald's. But don't expect me to still be forking money out to support your nonsense. They seem to be amazingly ungrateful, or at least he is. Boom, spot on. Johnny said, you know, I get emotional because I love my country. I love the people and I love everything about it, you know. All right. Now we know if you go woke, you go broke. And Netflix should have learned this, but... It loves to tout its culture of avoiding rules and minimizing corporate red tape. And now they do have guidelines. And this article points out that they've added an anti-censorship section and a vow to spend our members, members' money more wisely. Mm -hmm. I will say this. Their new memo states that they will not censor specific artists or voices even if employees consider the content harmful, or if you find it hard to support our content, then Netflix may not be the best place for you. You have to wonder if they put that in there because maybe somebody's going to put out something about COVID and Harry and Megan are going to scream it's misinformation and refuse to produce anything. Oh, wait, no, that was Spotify. All right, moving on. All right, here we go. Harry is helping to launch some online safety toolkit aimed for children. And he's going to speak at a virtual event on Monday, which is billed as a discussion on how the digital world can be made kinder and safer, where children's health and well-being, blah, 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 word salad. Right. So I think what happened was somebody else came up with this and then Harry contacted them and wanted to put his name to it. He actually hasn't done anything. But um, apparently represented, he's claiming, representatives from the United Nations, European nations, African Union will also be on hand. Apparently this is a global thing and it's for the Five Rights Foundation, which is a London-based nonprofit. Right. So basically they did the work. He's slapping his name on it. 
Wow. You know, people allow this because I think they think it'll go better with Harry attached to it. But since he's become a global joke, it's hurting them. They just don't see it. All right, moving on. All right, a royal aide has implied that Harry and Meghan could still appear on the balcony with the Queen uh, during the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. They could still end up on the balcony. It's being claimed that there's going to be two balcony moments. And of course, there's no way to know if this is true or not, unless we see them actually, first of all, show up because it's being reported by Neil Sean now that they're already looking for excuses to drop out. But um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. All right, moving on. So this story coming up basically mirrors what I said yesterday. A woman who has maids, nannies, gardeners, chauffeurs, who doesn't work, who sits at home all day, you know, that has millions in the bank, that lives in a huge mansion, uh, and that has this life because she married somebody, lecturing about overworked mothers. You can't lecture and talk on something that you don't know about. She's yakking, but she doesn't know anything because she's not an overworked mother. <laughs> like, you know, stick to the things you know. Yeah. All right, moving on. Well, Pinterest Beatrice, even after being told that she will not be on the balcony for the Platinum Jubilee, went to a star-studded event with her husband. She went down the red carpet on Wednesday at the charity preview of the equestrian event, A Gallop Through History, which is one of the most anticipated shows celebrating the 70 years on the throne of the Queen. Beatrice looked gorgeous in a mermaid-style dress with a floral pattern while her husband looked great. He was wearing velvet. That seems to be the thing for men right now is velvet. A uh, velvet black jacket with black trousers and a bow tie. She showed no hard feelings over the fact that she's not going on the balcony because she's not a working royal. And she even got three cheers from performers during the show as she went by in the car. How cool is that? This is all part of the Royal Windsor Horse Show, which is the thing that Lady Louise rode her carriage for. It's running over four nights from Thursday to Sunday, and it basically takes people on a whirlwind trip through Britain's history from the reign of Queen Elizabeth I to her current namesake. You know, I have to say, I'm not that crazy about Eugenie, but I like her. I like Beatrice very much. And I think in the husband department, she definitely won the gold coin. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's move on. All right, we're going to look at this story now. Remember the picture that came out of William hugging that gentleman uh, while they were on tour in Scotland? Well, they did a little bit of a story on him. He was actually homeless after being evicted after he had a fight with one of his sons. So when William ditched his usual handshake and embraced him, he was just overcome with emotion. He said, you know, I'm a grandfather. It felt like a son hugging a father. And it was just fantastic. But, you know, you can see it on his face. So they did a bit of his background. When he was 17, he married his first wife, Edie. And they got married in 1970, and they were married for three decades until she passed away. Very sad. So apparently one of the kids wasn't biologically his, but he raised him. And uh, there was some kind of a row, and he lost the home that he had raised his children in and that he had been in for 30 years. So then he met, into, he met Ellen, and they moved in together, and uh, they ended up getting married. Yeah. So his wife, Ellen, wanted to take a selfie, but uh, apparently didn't know how to use the mobile phone, and he had to help her, <laughs> which I think is really, really sweet. Anyway, the man said he thought that William was going to make a great king for Scotland. He was excited. The whole story just, you know, warms your heart. I'm telling you. Fabulous. All right, I wanted to do a quick update with Miro and Finn because, yeah, watch this. He's picking up a toy. He's... he's He's choosing his toys out of the box. He's carefully deciding what he wants. Oh, and he picked up his favorite, which is the bunny rabbit. Hey, Finn. Hi. Has he got your toy? Oh, my goodness. He's got your toy. Mira. <laughs> he turns around. He's still got the rabbit in his mouth. <laughs> So those toys were supposed to be kill-proof, you know what I mean? Especially after what happened to Finn, but yeah, watch this. Now, what happened here, Miro? 
You killed the bunny rabbit toy. You killed the penguin toy. We're running out of toys for you, dude. We're running out. <laughs> Lucky for us, the rest are Kong toys. You are not that good. Yes. Okay, boys. So I know you're waiting to see the new toys that we're going to buy Finn, but I just decided I'm not going to buy them until Muro goes home. <laughs> his, his parents are flying back from Europe. Uh, they'll get home late Sunday night. So I guess on Monday or Tuesday, he'll go home and then hubby and I will go shopping for, for Finn for new toys. Wow. So much information. I, I want your thoughts on seeing the queen, on Lady Louise, on Beatrice, and of course, what's going on with Harry and Meghan. So make sure to leave those comments below. You know I read them. You know I love them. Okay. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell. Don't forget to make sure you're still subscribed because I got a message just today from somebody who once again said they were unsubscribed and they don't know why. Don't forget, you can email me. You can follow me on Twitter. You can follow me on Getter. You can follow me on Rumble. For those of you who have donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.